So we are going to talk about what it means for a function to be injective. And another word for injective is one to one. The basic definition of injective is that if we have two numbers, x1 and x2, which are inputs to the function, if those numbers are different, so if x1 is not equal to x2, then it must be the case that f of x1 is not equal to f of x2. So this is saying that if we have two different inputs that we plug into the function, then we must get two different outputs. Now there's another way that we can frame this statement using the contrapositive. We know that if we're looking at a statement p implies q, like we have here, that's the same thing as its contrapositive, which is not q implies not p. So if we think about how that applies to this statement here, we first want to look at not q. That's going to be the opposite of this second statement. In other words, f of x1 is equal to f of x2. So this is the negation of our original statement here. We know by the contrapositive that implies not p, which is the negation of this statement here. And that would be x1 equals x2. So this is saying another definition of injective is that if we get the same output to our function for two inputs, then those inputs must have been the same. Every output has at most one input. And that also has an important consequence when we look at multiple different inputs. So let's say we have an input space for our function, some set of values that we can input into the function. That would also be called the function's domain. So we have x1, x2, x3, and so on to, let's say, xn. So these are inputs that we can give into our function. Over here, we have the output space, which is also called the codomain of our function. So this output space contains all of the values that we could get if we input something into the function. So this could be y1, y2, y3, all the way down to yn. When we have an injective function, for all of these n inputs in our input space, each of them must have a different output. For example, x1 might be mapped to y1, x2 mapped to y2, x3 mapped to y3, and so on until xn is mapped to yn. Now there could be values in the output space in our codomain that don't have an input to give that output. However, we know that every output has at most one input that goes to that output. The reason for that is say that we had two different values, say x4 is another input, and that is also mapped to y3. Notice what happens in that case is f of x3 equals f of x4 because they have the same output. But x3 is not equal to x4. So by definition, this function is not injective. So this is not possible for an injective function. That means that if we look at a set of n different inputs into an injective function, they must be mapped to n different outputs. So that is how injective functions work. A function is injective if it maps two different inputs to two different outputs for every possible pair of inputs. And equivalently, by contrapositive, that means that if the function gives the same output for two values, then those two values must be equal. And using that definition, we know that if a function satisfies this statement, then it must be injective. And for any injective function, a set of n different inputs will always be mapped to a set of n different outputs.